Um, we do have a visiting guest speaker next week. Christy Bly will be visiting beginning Thursday afternoon and all day Friday. There are several activities scheduled, including dinners and um, her seminar in this venue, as well as a um, kind of an informal career advice session um, after lunch on Friday for graduate students. <coughs> If you are interested in having an individual meeting with um, Christy Bly, contact either Emily Mitchell or see Terry in the main office who also has the schedule for her visit. So um, please plan to participate in as much of that as you can. Um, so with that, I will introduce today's speaker. Um, Ty Wardell joins us from uh, Shadron State. He is a student of John Jenks and will be giving his um, project proposal seminar on evaluation of Deadwood Bighorn Sheep Translocation. Hello everyone, my name is Ty Waddell and this is my master's proposal presentation. My project is titled Evaluation of the Bighorn, uh, Deadwood Bighorn Sheep Translocation. Bighorn sheep historically inhabited the entire Black Hills region of South Dakota. They were extirpated from the area in the early 1900s due to overhunting. South Dakota Game Fish and Parks have successfully restored populations to the central and southern Black Hills, and these are shown in red on the maps. On the map, uh, the Spring Creek, Rapid Creek, and Sheridan Lake herds are around Rapid City. To the south of that is the Custer State Park herd. And then to the southwest is the Elk Mountain Herd, which extends into Wyoming. South Dakota Game Fish and Parks has also deemed uh, areas in the Black Hills potentially suitable for restoration and reintroduction that are right now vacant. And these areas are shown in purple on the map. And as you can see, in the far north of the Black Hills is Deadwood and the purple areas surrounding that. Bighorn sheep segregate sexually. Uh, males can occupy habitats with higher predator, predator densities, and in these areas, uh, forage quality is also higher, generally. Female bighorn sheep uh, occupy habitats closer to water sources and occur in larger social groups than do males. Escape terrain is a very important habitat attribute for bighorn sheep, and these can be characterized as uh, large rocky outcrops and slopes that are greater than or equal to 40 degrees. And the deadwood area that does does have a lot of this escape terrain. At Badlands National Park, Zimmerman found that uh, generally introduced and resident bighorn sheep would stay within 150 meters of uh, escape terrain. And so linear home ranges were closely associated with Badlands formations. So because of this association between bighorn sheep and escape terrain, it's important to evaluate home ranges using three-dimensional analysis. Disease and parasites can cause significant mortality in bighorn sheep. Uh, there's many causative, disease, causative diseases, including lungworms and bacteria. And when these causative diseases are combined with stressors such as poor nutrition or harsh climate, uh, they can become mortality agents. If uh, bighorn ewes uh, do get the pneumonia complex, the surviving ewes may become immune, but this immunity is not transferred to the lambs. One previous study by Smith et al. in the Black Hills over a three year period from 2010 to 2012 showed that lamb survival was at 2%. And this was due to disease and predation. However, other studies in the Black Hills on back to pighorn sheep have shown in the absence of disease that lamb survival can be as high as 40%. Cassier and Sinclair found in their study that pneumonia was the primary limiting factor to uh, population growth of bighorn sheep in the Hell's Canyon region of Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. 43% of all mortalities were caused by pneumonia. 27% were caused by mountain lions, but they did not see this as a uh, population growth limiter. In contrast to uh, 
separate studies in Arizona and California found that mountain lions were the co primary cause of mortality. And they also found that uh, harvest through hunter harvest and other removal methods of mountain lions in that area did increase uh, bighorn sheep population. Evaluation of large mammal translocations is extremely critical. And this is due to an expected uh, initial mortality. And that can be due to the amount of distance we're gonna have to translocate them and things like that. There's also a relatively low number of uh, bighorn sheep being initially translocated. And although there is, uh, we did do habitat analysis on this area, <coughs> there's no historical uh, use information for the Northern Black Hills. So the habitat capability is a concern. And then there's also a potential for predation. And that's because we're bringing sheep from a, a very different region down, all the way down to South Dakota. And uh, mountain lions, other predators can hit this these uh, translocated sheep very hard after release because they're not familiar with the terrain, things like that. <coughs> then we also want to provide them time necessary for acclimation. I've also uh, shown a map here of the 2016 Black Hills Hunter Mountain Lion Harvest. And I'm just using this to show you that although the mountain lion harvested, were harvested throughout the Black Hills, there's a good number in the Northern Hills showing that there's a population of mountain lions in the area. Our objectives are to document survival, not specific mortality, and to estimate population size of bighorn sheep in the Deadwood area, assess genetic diversity and disease prevalence of bighorn sheep in the Deadwood area, assess movement patterns post-release of bighorn sheep in the Deadwood area, and to evaluate third order habitat selection post-release, and estimate herbaceous biomass at bighorn sheep foraging sites in the, bighorn, or in the Deadwood area. Uh, the Black Hills, most of you probably know where that's at, southwest corner of South Dakota, it extends into Wyoming. The South Dakota part of the Black Hills is broken down into three subregions. To the south and the west is the Hell Canyon region. In the central, the central area is called the Mystic region. And then the dark green at the top is the Northern Hills region. And that's where we'll be focused, is the Northern Hills. And the Northern Hills is characterized by canyons, mountain peaks, and broad valleys. Soils of the region include limestones, dolomites, and sandstones of Paleozoic origin. The northern region also receives more precipitation in the form of snow and is colder than that of the southern regions of the Black Hills. The overstory is dominated by ponderosa pine forests, and these usually occur in monotypic stands. However, they can be uh, intermixed with quaking aspen and paper birch. The Grizzly Gulch fire of June 29, 2002 burned for 13 days and consumed 11,589 acres. And this occurred just south of Deadwood and the surrounding area. So what this fire actually did was remove all those stands of uh, pine trees, as you can see in the picture on the left, that used to be mostly uh, pine forest. Just like the picture on the right, that's what a typical Black Hills forest looks like. <coughs> So this opened up the overstory so that bighorn sheep would have good line of sight for uh, see incoming predators and that made this area very suitable for, for the reintroduction. So we're going to translocate these bighorn sheep from the Luscar Mine near Hidden, Alberta and that's just north of Banff National Park and we're going to bring them all the way back down to Deadwood, South Dakota. The trip is going to last over 20 hours each way and you can kind of see I mapped our route here, that we kind of go off to the east a little bit. We have to go through that specific port of entry when we're bringing animals back. So since it's such a long trip, we want to do this as quickly as possible, hopefully in three days, because we don't want to have these sheep confined in trailers for any longer than necessary. Um, Deadwood does show a high habitat capability for bighorn sheep, and that's based on habitat suitability models and a qualitative assessment of topography, forage, and water that was done by South Dakota Game Fish and Park. So our goal to restore uh, bighorn sheep to the northern Black Hills includes capturing 26 bighorn sheep. And among those 26 sheep, we're gonna try to get uh, one to two young adult rams, and then the rest breeding age ewes. The reason for young adult rams is because our hope is that they will stay with the ewes throughout the study and we are assuming that older adult rams would be more inclined to seek out other herds and try to spread their genetics. 
So at capture, we're going to bait uh, modified drop nets with alfalfa. When the sheep come in to eat, we'll drop the nets and then we'll have plenty of volunteers on hand to run in there uh, wearing their helmets and hobble the sheep and then carry them over to processing stations where South Dakota Game Fish and Parks and myself will be. At processing, we're going to attach radio collars, which will be store on board GPS collars from advanced telemetry systems. We're also going to be taking blood samples. These will be testing disease titers and genetic diversity. Each individual will get ear tags, and this will be useful for identification in the field. Nasal and pharyngeal swabs will be also used to evaluate diseases. And then we're going to be giving an experimental MOVI vaccination. And MOVI is a type of pneumonia strain that has been shown to be present in the Black Hills. So we're going to be giving, this, giving them this vaccination so that we can try to hopefully protect them from getting any transfers from diseased sheep in the Black Hills already. The release site we chose was on private land, three and a half kilometers southwest of Deadwood. Monitoring will be done very closely the first six months, probably five to seven days per week. And the monitoring will be done with handheld and vehicle telemetry. Aerial telemetry will be used uh, occasionally and just if needed. And then also visual identification uh, with the ear tanks, things like that. Survival will be estimated using the Kaplan Meyer method with staggered entry. Carcasses will be transported to the South Dakota Game Fish and Parks offices in Rapid City, where they'll be necropsied and cause of death will be determined. The respiratory tract and the organs associated with that will be sent to Washington State University where they can better test for uh, the pneumonia complex. And then population estimates will be determined visually and with the use of telemetry as they're monitored daily. Tissue and blood samples will be extracted using the DNEZ uh, tissue kit and the samples will be analyzed using 20 microsatellite markers. Descriptive statistics for microsatellite results be calculated using GenLex and GenePOP software. And then we'll compare the disease titers and genetic diversity of the captured translocated bighorn sheep to those of similar uh, populations of black hills bighorn sheep herds. We're assuming that post-release there's going to be a lot of habitat pioneering. So we're going to look at year one uh, to monitor that. And how we're going to do that is um, uh, monitor the movement patterns post-release by GPS satellites and this will be uh, stored on the GPS collars and then offloaded on the ARC map where they can be uh, visually, where the data can be visualized. And then we're also going to be using that visual identification and telemetry as we monitor daily. Bird order set, habitat selection will be determined the same way. We're going to be uh, offloading GPS collars but this will be looking at year two and the resource selection will be evaluated using design three analysis, which is looking at uh, selection as negative, positive, or neutral on um, habitat types. Program R will be used to calculate selection ratios and chi-square tests for overall deviation from random macrohabitat types. For vegetative characteristics, we'll be collected along 100 meter transects. Uh, they'll be centered at foraging sites, so they'll be going 50 meters both ways. And these will also follow topographical contours of the land. So we're going to look at overstory canopy and it'll be recorded at uh, one meter intervals and this will be uh, with the use of a GRS densitometer. The percent canopy cover of the total herbaceous cover, grasses, forbs, and shrubs will be estimated at in 0.1 meter square quadrants at three meter intervals and this is also known as the Daubenmeyer method. Aspect will be recorded with the compass percent slope will be recorded with a clinometer. And distance in meters to that nearest escape train, which if you remember was the rocky outcrops, and slopes greater than or equal to 40 degrees, that'll be recorded with a rangefinder. Down woody debris will be interpolated using a pictorial guide, and that'll be provided by Black Hills National Forest Service. Visual obstruction from vegetation will be recorded with a modified Robel pole. And if you're unfamiliar with the Robel pole, it is just a pole with alternating black and white bands, 1.27 centimeters thick. Then we'll have an observer kneeling four meters away 
they look at the pole and it'll be numbered, and then they record uh, how much obstruction the vegetation uh, shows on the pole. We'll also clip vegetation uh, at ground level using 0.25 square meter circular plots at 20 meter intervals. And then this clip vegetation will be oven dried at 60 degrees Celsius for 48 hours and weighed to the nearest 0.1 gram. <laughs> then the Robel pole measurements will be correlated with the clip dried herbaceous biomass and that'll be used to estimate standing herbage. So our goal is to provide an evaluation of a newly established bighorn sheep herd and that's based on acclimation, their survival, their movement patterns, and the habitat suitability. We're also going to look to address uh, the success of the tr uh, transplant by providing recommendations on future transplants and determining the carrying capacity of the region. I'd like to thank the South Dakota State University Department of Natural Resources, my advisor, Dr. Jonathan Jenks, South Dakota Game Fish and Parks, and especially John Canta, Trent Hatton, and staff. Question. What's the rationale behind bringing uh, sheep all the way from Alberta as opposed to uh, relocating more local ones? This herd is actually one of the only ones we could get sheep from because I think we tried Montana and they denied us. So they have a very uh, big healthy population in Alberta, so they're willing to give sheep away. We're not giving away, but sell them to it. <coughs> so I'm curious about um, how you're choosing, how they're going to choose the individuals that are going to come. And because I was curious about, uh, you said, I'm curious about the genetics you're going to bring in. And are you going to bring in a bunch of inbred animals? And or how does this work in, uh, in terms of how you plan to kind of come back? Like I said, the Alberta population of Bluss Carmine is very large and very healthy. Okay. So when we drop the net, there's probably going to be 50 or 60 sheep under there. We're going to try to select the healthiest ewes, and then also we're going to let, let the larger rams go, and we're going to capture the younger rams that look nice and healthy, and those are the ones we're going to choose. How large is the population? I'm just curious. I believe it's 700. Uh, you said you were um, developing and trying to define success. Like, what's your criteria for a successful translocation? My, I would say uh, having these, this population survive and reproduce and keep building our population. Maybe uh, in the future being able to translocate sheep from <coughs> Deadwood to other populations of the Black Hills that might need uh, a healthy reintroduction. They're intermediate feeders, so they're between a grazer and a browser. So they can pretty much eat anything, uh, brush, leaves off brush, forbs, and grass. They're going to select probably for forbs and uh, most nutritious grasses. So they'll be dynamic during growing season, too, all you know, wintertime, summertime, spring. Yeah, like in the winter, it's going to be easier for them to take leaves off of brush and things like that. So did you monitor vegetation during the, you know, the habitat the suitability? Did you also measure this through the whole years or just the whole of the season? The habitat suitability was actually done by South Dakota Game Fish and Parks. Okay. But they use uh, slope, um, different vegetative characteristics, you know, distance from water, all kinds of different uh, things that go things that go into that suitability analysis. But you also do the vegetation without Paul, so what's that purpose? That is to see what uh, habitats they're selecting for on a micro habitat level, third order habitat selection. Thank you. Mm -hmm. but, so you mentioned a little bit about pneumonia. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Is there pneumonia already present in the original herd in Alberta? And is there <coughs> any issues with pneumonia when you bring them back? There is them? not pneumonia present in the herd in Alberta. So these sheep are completely naive when we bring them down, which is also a problem because we do have sheep with pneumonia in the Black Hills. So if they interact with each other, we could have a transfer. So how close are the sheep in the Black Hills to where you're going to reintroduce? Well, that's something I should have addressed. It's, uh, we're looking at 30 miles. 30 miles. Yes. 
And then we also don't have very many domestic sheep in the area, which is also a good thing. That's another thing that went into this habitat suitability model. You mentioned uh, radio telemetry as well as satellite collars. What's your sample size for uh, the satellite collars? We're going to be uh, attaching 26. 26. Uh, okay, so all of them. Yep. So then what specifically is your role in this project? Because I understand the collaborators have done the vegetation analysis. Well, I'm actually doing the vegetation analysis on the microhabitat level. So okay. they did it overall in macrohabitat to see if this area was good to release them into. Awesome. Then within that, I'm going to see what they're selecting for within that. remotely have a question? <coughs> Any other questions from the audience here? Okay, don't forget Christy Bly next week. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.